The Purim holiday takes us back to a time in history when genocide against the Jews was attempted some 2,400 years ago. It marks the Jewish people's rescue from the plot of Haman, a high officer of the Persian Empire and advisor to King Ahasuerus. Haman's rage was incited by a single Jew, Mordechai, who refused to bow before him. Rather than seeking revenge against Mordechai alone, Haman plotted against the entire Jewish people. Haman gained permission from the king, Ahasuerus, to do as he pleased against the Jews. He legislated a pogrom that would wipe out every Jew in the empire on a single blood-soaked day. Haman cast lots to determine the day when he and his minions would destroy the Jews. In leaving the state entirely to chance, Haman's message was unmistakable. The Jews who believed in the providence of a beneficent God would be subject to the blind whim of fate. A casual roll of the dice would be the instrument that seals their end, while the God of the Jews would stand helplessly by. Haman's challenge came at a crucial point in history. His provocations were a test. Was God still relevant in the post-biblical age when open miracles were no longer common and prophecy was coming to an end? In the end, the Jews were saved from Haman's plot, but pointedly, they were saved in a non-miraculous way. In the events of Purim, serendipitous happenings conspired to bring about unexpected results. Alone, each of these events could be seen as nothing more than a fortuitous coincidence, but taken together, they weave a miraculous chain of events orchestrated by God. King Ahasuerus holds a spectacular six-month feast in the capital city of Shushan. It just so happens that when Queen Vashti refuses to obey the king, he has her eliminated. And when a global beauty contest is held to replace her, it just so happens that Esther, a Jewish girl, is chosen. When palace guards plot to assassinate the king, Mordechai, Esther's relative, happens to overhear and foil the plot. One night it just so happens that the king can't fall asleep. He asks for the Book of Records which just so happens to open to the page recording Mordechai's long-forgotten act of loyalty. At that moment, Haman happens to approach the king for permission to hang Mordechai. Instead, Ahasuerus tells Haman to dress Mordechai in the royal robes and parade him on horseback through the streets of Shushan. The heroics of Mordechai and Esther was in recognizing God's hand and taking the necessary action, no matter how challenging it may be. When Esther fears approaching the king uninvited because one could be killed for such presumptuousness, Mordechai tells her, It is certain that the Jewish people will be saved one way or another. God promised it will never be destroyed. The only question, Esther, is if you will rise to the challenge God has given you, enabling redemption to come through your hand. This is your big moment, the reason for which you were born. At the climactic moment, Esther hosts a banquet where she reveals that she is Jewish and exposes Haman for planning genocide against her people. The king is shocked and orders that Haman be hanged on the very same gallows he prepared for Mordechai. Ahasuerus grants the Jews the right to defend themselves on the 13th of the month of Adar, the day of the planned attack. The Jews defeat their enemies, including Haman's ten sons, who, like their father before them, are hanged on the gallows. Mordechai enacts an annual holiday with feasting, giving gifts to poor, and food to friends. Appropriately, the holiday is called Purim, literally, lots that are cast, commemorating how Haman's worldview that everything is determined by chance was overturned by the Jewish ideal that God is present. Chekhov once said that if a rifle lies above the mantle in Act One of a play, it had better go off by Act Three. The mark of a good playwright is that no plot element is superfluous. Everything ultimately has a role, and the same goes for the great playwright in the sky. Everything we humans do has its role in the play we call life, but not necessarily in the way we imagine. The book of Esther does not mention the name of God, and that's the whole point. The message of Purim is that God is here even when he doesn't seem to be. God's presence in history is felt not just when the sea splits or when divine fire descends upon a mountain in full view of the entire nation. God is present in the everyday workings of life and history as well. We all have choices to make. That is how we cast our lots in life. But what happens after we make the choice is no longer up to us. Purim demonstrates that God is in complete control, even when he remains behind the scenes. Without the fanfare of miracles, in the space between human choice and the ultimate result, the master of the universe will yet have his say.